have you seen what's down the back? We haven't showed anyone yet. Have we showed him yet? We, we, we waited till you got here so we could just kind of... You want to have a look? Come on, come with me. The first D-Max Peacor tray is a thing. Here's the big one. Mm. So, I've got to say a massive, massive, massive shout out to my Peacor team. Huge shout out to my Peacor team. Two weeks ago, the brand new D-Max tray was not even a thing. And in two weeks, engineers have been all over it. They've designed the tray specific for the brand new D-Max. My production team over there, and actually just through there, on the other side of that wall over there, the Peacor team have been burning the midnight oil. I'm proud of what you see in here. So, what you do see here, this is a Peacor tray, um, retail package. This is how one of our dealers or a customer would receive a Peacor tray. Inside here is the tray, headboard, toolboxes. Then on the back end down here, this is a Peacor half canopy. Now the half canopy, um, this one here is fitted out with all of the best of the best electronics that you can possibly get in Australia. The boys are gonna run you through this stuff. Every time I talk about our products, it's, it's I don't think I could put this on for five years. I get so excited about what my team achieves here. All the suppliers that we work with, when we come together, amazing things just happen. Yes, it's a push, it's a slog, uh, but it's Friday actually today, and I know the Peak or team are going home this afternoon, high-fiving each other for creating a brand new product for what I think is going to be one of the biggest markets for us. It is the best value dual cab ute in the country as far as I'm concerned. Couple that with the best tray in the country as far as I'm concerned. You put those two things together, and like I said, it's just like poof, amazing things happen. So that's the plan for this afternoon. We're going to show you through the Peak or install. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be exciting. You're going to enjoy this episode when you see what comes out of this box and the transformation that it makes here. Right, let's talk plan. Mm. I'm going to do something. Like I'm actually gonna do something. What do you want oh, me to oh, do? Okay. I'm working for you. I'm working for you guys tonight. <laughs> He's helping. Yeah. You can unbox. This this is actually gonna happen. Now it doesn't happen very often, but in this episode, it's actually gonna happen. I'm gonna do something. You're gonna have to teach me. What are those things that you use for bolts? <laughs> you know, the, you turn them and they do. Tech screws. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tech screws and zip ties. This is how we're going to roll the, uh, this afternoon. The builder, yes we can. No, we're not going to roll like that. All jokes aside, I'm going to jump in with you guys. Obviously, for me, for product knowledge, it's a really good thing. I've only actually ever fitted one peak or tray. Let's do a little bit of a flashback from when me, Jack, and Sarah flew to America oh, and drove yeah. halfway across the country, and on five days of no sleep, we installed the first oh, ever oh. Gladiator tray. Let's take a quick look at that. It's been five days, 4,000 kilometres. Let's go and have a look. Come and, come and check this out. Brand new Jeep Gladiator, one of the first ones to come off the production line in the United States. So the car's getting wrapped today, so me and Jack are now on our own. We're yeah. going to get the, the whole P-Core system fitted to the back of yeah. this thing. All in all, can't complain at all. First Gladiator few tweaks that we need to make. It's just gone like 11 o'clock at night. We've had a couple of dramas. Too old for <laughs> This is what we do this for. Welcome to the USA, America. So as you can see every now and again, I actually do get involved. I do do something. But all jokes aside, this is all part of the R&D process. It's probably good for me to give the feedback. You guys get complacent, you get used to it, the changes. Me personally, I like things simple. So for the customers, like the use of, I suppose, all the camper trailers that we produce and all the rest of it, for me, it's all about simplicity. So the installation, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Honestly, all jokes aside, you guys let me know what you want me to do, and more importantly, what you don't want me to touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything that I can wreck, you know I will destroy it. Let's get into it, let's get this thing out of the tray and um, 
Let's pay call the day, Max. You like that? Let's pay call the day, Max. Pay call that's the day. Good, that's good. All right, so the package is all open. Um, just undone the bolts that secure it down to the pallet. Now you can see here at this stage, that's the main component of the tray. The rear drawer's already fitted. Um, come down and have a look. We'll go through a little bit of this later on. Uh, wiring harnesses are all installed. Uh, so depending on the model that you go with with PCOR, some of them are plug and play. Uh, some of them you do have to do some wiring of the tail lights. So that is the main component there. We're gonna lift this up, put onto the trestles, uh, install the headboard, which is in this side here then get that fitted onto the car and then fit up the rest of the uh, accessories. It's that simple, eh? That's it. It really is. It really is that simple. All right. All of the PCOR trays are manufactured almost entirely out of aluminium. There's some uh, components in there that are steel, the structural components. Uh, but aluminium is, is really the makeup and they're all powder coated in black. Now, sitting underneath the tray, We've got a 75 litre poly uh, water tank that comes standard. There's a water pump in there as well, which gets fitted into the toolbox and a massive slide out rear drawer. At about that 180 kilo mark, again, model specific, what you're getting uh, compared to a factory tub. Now the D-Max tub, I'd make an estimate that that's gonna sit somewhere around 90 to 100 kilos. Um, so for really another 80, 85 kilos, and you've got to consider that uh, your GVM, obviously, when you're building this sort of style of, of truck, they are extremely lightweight, but being aluminium, they're non-corrosive, so they're extremely uh, durable as well. Ready to get the headboard on? Yeah. 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 So, two wheels do the headboard. Yeah. This one's just got to change over the fuel filler. Which one's easier? Fuel filler. Okay, I'll do that. What, what, what do I do with that? So, the diff breather from factory runs up to your filler. Yep. So, we'll just attach that to our one. Mm -hmm. Once that's off, this is your new stuff. Yep. Basically, put it on. We cut that to length, or is that already? No. So length? they give you more than you need. Yep. So we'll put it on the tank. Yep. Let it hang. Yep. Measure the, it up. Trim it back. When the headboard's on. Yep. And yeah, we can go from there. Okay. Cool. Okay. Hey, job number one. Let's see if I can find some tools. Steve's over there trying to find uh, the right tools to do the right job. Uh, just going back to what I said before. So the boys are bolting on the headboard. Um, the whole bolt kit obviously comes with it. The headboard's being assembled onto the tray. And the reason uh, that we ship them out with the headboards is obviously you can see the uh, shape of the tray. Logistically, we can keep the package a lot smaller. But everything is pre-wired. So you can see here, this is the main wiring harness. Uh, everything's running through here for the central locking, uh, tail lights, your headboard lights your water filler hoses, your breathers, and everything just simply connects up. So you can see we use all quality plugs, Deutsch plugs, proper manufactured harnesses, you know, with shrink wrap and conduit and all the things that you would expect out of an OE sort of style uh, tray. There you go, he's found the right tool. Did you hear that? You got the right one? Yeah, yeah? good. You can find something in this workshop. Clean workshop's a good workshop, hey Steve? Yeah, it is. It is, he doesn't agree with me on that one either. Do agree, we always kind of you can tell by his face. Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Who sees Steve give me that look when I say something that he doesn't like? What look? You do that look. <laughs> that was it, eh? That was it. Uh, but that's about the wiring harness, um, and that's the quality of product that uh, PCOR is all about. PCOR is all about that OE style, universal fitment, very simple fitting. We obviously recommend you get into a peak or dealer, um, but it is a job that you can do with your mates on the weekend. Total install time on this tray, we're coming up on 29 minutes right now we've been working on this. I think that the boys will get this fitted up in around about four hours, Dave. Yeah, I honestly reckon if you're with your mates on a weekend putting this together, yeah. we'll still be putting the IKEA furniture together inside. 100%. That's why I love Dave, <laughs> hey? He got his all the, all the best calls. Proud as punch about what we do here and that's that's what it's all about. 
let's get cracking. Otherwise, that four hours might turn into five or six. We're gonna end up looking sure. pretty silly. Uh, look, talking like they know me, they don't know the half. I'm like Owen Hart, mixed inside of Noah's Ark. I had battles in the dark. Now, I feel like it wouldn't be fair if I made the comment that you can do this over a couple of beers. That we didn't actually have a couple of beers. Yeah. Now, let's, <laughs> let me first just state, it's outside of working hours here. It is 5.30 on a Friday afternoon, and the boys have been working their asses off, so it is time to have a beer. Steve, how's your ginger beer? Ginger. It's still a beer. It's still a beer. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Cheers. So we're gonna prove the concept. You can actually install this over a couple of beers. Hmm. Who said stop working? Oh yeah, I got a spare hand. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no delay, I made a note today. No the race, nobody owe you grace. God did it, that be my only space. Look, all in it, my brother throw the bait. Okay. Well, that's that sort done. Okay. Really? You ever heard the sound of one, neck, one hand clapping? Does a tree make a sound in the woods if no one's there? Of course it does. That's stupid. <laughs> that was on The Simpsons, dude, when I was like nine years old. If a tree falls in the woods and no one's around, does it make a sound? Absolutely. Not a rocket ship. It's a big tray and it was windy. Ooh, it is time. Tell me, can we live? Tell me, can we breathe? Because we'll sacrifice sleep if it means staying awake will help us live a dream. The first D Max Peak Core tray is a thing. Now what I get most interested about, while well, they muck around down the back here, is the body blend. Right, now you're not going to see the whole picture, but what we really concentrate on here is the aesthetics, the, the look of the headboard, and like it, I, I said uh, earlier before, every peak or tray is specific to a vehicle. Toolbox lengths, uh, your chassis length, the actual tray length, your tray width, and the blend of the body. Uh, this is something that distinctively makes peak or peak or. And let's face it, we spend so much money and so much time on making these trucks look good. Everybody wants a good looking truck. Um, and I think uh, that peak will definitely uh, do it the best. Um, wrapped with that, absolutely wrapped with that. Once we get the front panel in, you'll see these things come together. It's, it's pretty cool. Tell me, can we live? Tell me, can we breathe? Because we'll sacrifice sleep if it means staying awake will help us live a dream. All we need is the green light. If you ain't ready, you'll get left. Cause I promise my team ride and we ready for whatever. If wings are made of peppers, then let's let our soul fly. Right now, we're just gonna connect the water and the fuel. Water's on the driver's side. Fuel and everything's on the passenger side. Once we've done that, got the tray down tight. We fit the toolboxes, the guards, be done with it. All we need is the green light. If you ain't ready, you'll get left. Cause I promise my team ride and we... Now you can see the tray is bolted down. Uh, six bolts are in uh, and that is completed. Steve's buttoning up all the wiring, uh, the fuel system, everything that's going in, uh, that runs through the headboard. Uh, the rear toolboxes, again, black powder coat. They go with the aesthetic design of the whole Paycor tray. Uh, it's one of the products that we're really proud of. It kind of gives Paycor that whole Paycor look. Central locking in the front. Uh, in this toolbox, we've got the water pump housing there as well. So you can see the water pump lines are already, or the water lines, I should say, are already installed in the tray. Like everything else, it's kind of plug and play. It's just a matter of connecting them into the back of the toolbox. When it comes to the toolbox installation, what you're going to see us do in a minute is any of the fastening holes where it bolts up into the tray, we're going to silicon around those uh, holes to help prevent any water ingress. We don't claim an IP rating on the rear toolboxes. They are waterproof to an extent. If you hit into the seals with a, a pressure cleaner or if you're under a water crossing for a long period of time, eventually water is going to come through them. So if you've got extreme valuables, store them somewhere else. Uh, but for your general sort of stuff, um, they're, they're pretty cool. And depending on the tray as well, you see on the DMX tray, they are a, a huge toolbox. Tape it up with a massive departure angle. So let's get this on. Dave, are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, let's do this. So I'll just take position down here. We've got uh, nuts and bolts already ready to go in the top. Yep. Dave will jam some silicon in, and then what I'll do, I'll hold it up for him. He'll get the first bolt started. I'll give him a hand with the other side, and then we'll jump on each side and, and get him in. Get 
pretty proud of these designs sometimes. Tail light connection, pre-wired into the tray. Dave's putting the toolbox in, Steve's doing the other side. I'm doing the wiring. <laughs> How good is that? It's pretty cool, eh? It's pretty good, isn't it? Next step, water pump bracket. So you saw before, we've got the water line coming out the back. Water feed went straight into that bulkhead into the side of the toolbox. Here's our water pump bracket. I'll get this all bolted in now, and I can just connect that hose straight into the back of the um, straight into the back of the water tap there, and fresh water straight out of the tank on the switch out of the back of the truck. Now with PCOR, like I said before, um, the styling is just as important as the functionality as far as we're concerned. Um, you can see I was talking about this body uh, blend before and the gap from the front and the trim piece that follows all the way through. So you can see it's really integrating what was always typically you know, a commodity item was a, a flatbed tray. And in the early days, no one really cared about you know, what they look like. They just had to do the job. I, I think that we really focus on incorporating the styling of modern vehicles uh, into the functionality of having a, a flatbed tray. And you can see this body blend here, we're about to install the rear guards and it's all starting to come together now. We're trying to adopt that kind of OE mentality, uh, original equipment manufacturer mentality when we're designing all of our products, engineering team here put a lot of work into it. Um, it takes a lot of hours, a lot of, a lot of design time, a lot of uh, designs go in the bin uh, before we end up with something that we're happy with, that we're ready to uh, release to market. And so far, this is just going absolutely amazing. The look of this is coming together, and this is going to be one really, really cool looking truck. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car in the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car in the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Yo. Yo, Dada, where are you? I'm working, dude. Where are you? We're at home. Like, just like having like a fire. Like, when are you done like, with work? Oh, you're at home having a fire with your brother and your mates. Yeah. Hmm, sounds like fun. I'm here building a D Max. Yeah, well, when are you going to be done? No, oh, mate, I think we'll still be a couple of hours, dude. I'll be home as soon as I can, all right? Uh, easy. All right, homie. I love you. Bye. I'll see you soon. Bye. It's probably about right now that I should actually... I haven't even addressed the reason that the kids aren't here. Christian Nation this year in grade 11. So they are in uh, senior school now. The days of pulling them out of school uh, to come and do builds and that sort of stuff are over. That stuff's now for the weekends. Um, so unfortunately... The boys didn't make it into this uh, build series. I know they wanted to be there, but it is Friday night. They're teenagers now, they're kids. They got their girlfriends and their mates and all the rest of it. They need to go out and do their own things. I've had my time. Now I'm stuck here building the D-Max, but I would prefer that the kids were here building the D-Max and I was at home having a bonfire with my mates. So Christian and Ashton, thank you very much for not helping. But boys, for all your help over the past seasons and the future still to come, they will be back for the big builds, I guarantee it. Um, and I don't think I'm really built for this anyway, to be honest with you. I think the kids are better suited to building trucks and I'm probably better suited to doing what I do best, which I don't even know what that is yet, but I'll figure it out one day. All right, well, you can see here, um, this side is all done. The mud guards are on. Only thing left to do on this side is hang the mud flap. Uh, we'll do that right at the end because when the mud flaps go on, to me, that's when the trays are complete. Let's have a bit of a catch up on what the boys are up to. I know Dave's working on mounting the rear camera right now at the moment and the rear fascia. Uh, all the OE reversing sensors will go into the back there into that fascia as well. Is that what you're doing? Just starting now. Am I, am I lying to everybody? No, nah, spot on. Starting right, with spot the rear on. fascia. Yep. Because I saw, so there's the factory camera there. Rear fascia will go down there. Uh, camera will go in a relocated spot, but it will still function exactly as it would have from standard and so will all the rear reversing sensors. Steve, where are you at? Finishing off this mud guard. All right. Uh, We're yeah. almost there. <laughs> We're almost there. 
I'll be honest to you, with you. Well, I'm going to be honest. We ran into a couple of little small fitment issues that we kind of all jumped on board and we were scratching our heads. And anyway, we sorted that out. Like I said, this is a prototype tray, so it has gone a little bit over time. But we're about three and a half hours into it now. Realistically, I think there probably is about half an hour left. Three blokes, four hours. We said four hours at the start, but I was hoping to do it a lot faster than that. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, stay tuned. Grab yourself a beer, grab some smooth chips, sit on the couch, and watch this. It's time for another one. Yeah. Job's done. You need wings, Pat. Steve needs some wings. Big man's tired. <laughs> a little bit tired. You know what the thing is, though? There was no time constraint on this build. I think everyone just got a bit excited. Yeah. This afternoon, we were like, you know what? Let's put the tray on tonight. Yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> It'll only take us four hours. Guess what? It took us four hours and eight minutes. Exactly. That was pretty good going. Not bad. First first one it's been on for this one. Do you want to finish it? Should we finish it tonight? It's yeah. a big question. Yes, question of the hour. I'm keen if you guys are keen. I think it's up to Steve. Up to me. Yeah. Mm. After that, you're going to be good to go. <laughs> yeah. You are going to be bouncing off the walls. <laughs> Look at him. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. That was definitely not a Red Bull commercial. No. I've never seen a Red Bull commercial ever look like that before. <laughs> All right, Steve's good to go. Quick walk around, the tray's done. Have a look. When the mud flaps are on, the tray is done. It's all buttoned up. Only thing that we've got left to do is actually to put in the sensors. Now, because um, the trays are a little bit universal, so if you buy a low spec vehicle and any model with a P-Core tray, you won't get reverse sensors. If you buy a high spec, you do get reverse sensors. So we don't go and punch holes into the back of the tray just in case that particular customer doesn't have reverse sensors on their car. So that's probably the only thing left to do. We might do that later on tonight or that might be a job for Monday. I think that's probably a job for Monday. It's a job, it's a man. You can see like I've been talking about the whole time, the body lines flowing right throughout uh, everything that is related to people in the gum. I'm harping on styling again, but it all comes back to really that one thing. It's all about the styling along with the functionality. Now we're about to hide what's going on up here, but on the headboard with the p tray, you've got multiple mounting points in here to take multiple accessories. So some accessories that you can buy from uh, p is spare wheel mounts. So you can put a spare wheel mount on this side or on that side. Obviously to accommodate different size tyres from a 30 inch tyre right up to about, we have done a 40 inch tyre on a Pecor headboard in the United States. So I'm gonna say that these ones will take up to a 35. On an 1850 tray, you're not gonna get twin 35s, are you? No. No, so probably twin 33s. But check the spec with your Pecor dealer if you're interested. Um, some other things that we've got there is we have Max Trax mounts that go on here as well. So you bolt the mounts and then the Max Trax slides straight in. Uh, we have high lift jack mounts. Yeah. available now as well and there's more accessories that have been developed so again at the time of you know if you're looking for a peak or tray speak to your local dealer or, or the team at um, at patriot hq and we can help you out with that but we're about to cover this up with a peak or half canopy and wait until you see the gear inside of this half canopy which has come directly out of the peak or production line it's pretty cool that'd be good it's pretty cool all right let's do it <laughs> So while the boys um, figure out how we're going to get this off, or how we're going to get this off, the best way to lift it off that no one hurts themselves, I'll quickly run you through this. Like all of the Pcor products, like I've seen, uh, been saying before, everything is pre-wired, right? So part of the electronics that you saw in the last episode, the boys have run an Anderson plug uh, through to the back. The Anderson plug is going to connect uh, directly to here. Crank, so that's the one running off the car, so that's going to be your DC charge into the BMS. This one is uh, for solar, so if the winner wants to add a solar uh, blanket, uh, solar panel onto the roof, or if they want to charge on a solar blanket, and the light plug here at the top is for the light, hence the name light plug. 
Did that make sense? <laughs> anyway, the point is everything is pre-wired. Same style of construction method. So all aluminium, uh, all powder coated. Uh, Peak all canopies only come in black. That's about it for the exterior. Before we marry this thing up to the canopy, to the headboard, you're not gonna see that wiring again. And I'll give you a very brief run through on the canopy, but for all the full details, you're gonna have to wait for the big uh, reveal. Steve, how do you wanna do this? How do you wanna get it off? Uh, you guys have to be on that side because it's got all the electrics, it's the heaviest. Yep. Yeah. And then I'll just muscle this side. Well, why don't you guys come on this side because it's heaviest and I'll go on the white side. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. Because you're you stronger want. than me, Steve. You're so strong. You just had that Red Bull, I reckon you got it. Alright, are we ready? One, two, three. Okay, should we not be putting some foam down or something? Safety first, mate. I don't want to scratch the first ever D-Max tray. How did you get your phone out? It's not out, is it? <laughs> and there you have it. Canopy's on. Hell yeah. Right, now being this one is brand new, all the circuit breakers are off. Get all the breakers on. There will be some power in the battery. We should have, there we go. We got lights. You can hear the BMS chirping, so the BMS wants to be set up now. We're going to go through and do uh, all of the settings in the BMS, reset everything, make sure it knows how much battery that it's got. It's going to need a full 240 volt charge, and we'll chuck that on charge in a minute, we'll charge it overnight tonight. Uh, so the BMS can learn the characteristics of the battery all over again, we'll set how many amp hours are in there. Then the BMS can start controlling uh, everything that's going on. The run through of this one in here is we have the Red Arc Manager 30. It's a 30 amp charger. That charger controls all inputs of charge that are coming into the battery in this canopy. Uh, 120 amp hour battery is standard. We have the provisions to put in 220 amp hour batteries, or we can upgrade any customer uh, also to lithium. But the BMS, those states of charge or the charging sources that it will accept, it'll take 240 volt or 110 volt if you're in the United States. Worthwhile noting, all of these products are available in the US as well. It'll also take a DC charge, so off your car's alternator while you're driving or while your car's running, it'll take a DC charge and then it will accept solar as well. We have a solar input here. I explained before how that uh, solar input works for a roof mounted panel. If you had a solar blanket, uh, you would plug the blanket straight into here. A uh, real smart feature of the BMS, it'll always take the green and source of power first. So if you've got strong solar, it will take the solar charge over 240 charge and over the DC charge or the 12 volt charge as well. So it's, it's quite a green system. We've also got a thousand watt Red Arc pure sine wave inverter. That'll run pretty much anything that you'd want to take camping. Maybe not a big hairdryer or a microwave, but charging any sort of device, running laptops, battery chargers for uh, power tools, it'll accept all of that stuff as well. 12 volt plugs um, up in here, obviously your LED lighting, all of your fuses are clearly labeled all in the one spot. Uh, we've got a big pull out drawer on this side, and we also have storage in the half canopy. See this little flip down here, storage designed specifically for camp chairs. Camp chairs are one of those items that you can never find a good place to put them. This will take three of pretty much any style of standard collapsible um, camp chair. Coming around this side, I mean, you can see again, aesthetically, um, it's, it's got a great look, but it has the same adjustability at the back that uh, we were talking about before on the headboard. So you can mount a, a whole host of accessories. Uh, twin spares is pretty common um, for the half canopy, but you've still got a lot of room here to put on the back whatever you might like. I think probably one of the most common things now is push bikes, mountain bikes. A lot of people are into mountain biking. You put three or four mountain bikes on the back of the deck. Sarah's got this set up on, on her touring car. We normally put the kids uh, stand up jet ski on the back. The Yamaha pole ski uh, sits on the back, but a whole host of other things. I mean, you can pile up swags in the back. You can take barbecue smokers with you. You know, you still have the advantage to be able to do that. Uh, over on this side of the canopy, uh, we have the provisions to put on a, a drop down fridge slide so you can put a fridge in here. Being that this prize giveaway is going to be going uh, with the Patriot X1, uh, Dometic 55 litre fridge uh, is inside of the X1, but more on that 
on the final reveal. LED lights obviously on this side as well. Um, they're just an awesome bit of kit. Everything that you need is in there. You still retain a small space on the back of your, your tray. Uh, the other option is you can go for a full size peak or canopy, which comes all the way to the back. Um, I think we get this thing bolted down, boys, and then we might call it a night, eh? You hear the BMS, it's, you know what that sounds like to me when I hear, like when I walk through the production line and I hear a BMS chirping? <laughs> to me it sounds like a baby crying, eh? <laughs> Every time, if I walk through the factory late at night and I hear the chirping of a BMS, it sounds like That's your kid's crying. It needs your attention. <laughs> it, might, it might be weird, there's something wrong with me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, let's get some bolts in, for real.